how does resveratrol compare to like an antioxidant powerhouse like vitamin C? I think that was the main question we kept getting um, when we polled our followers. So is there even any data to justify? Gloria went down the rabbit hole. So let's see. Resveratrol is an oral supplement where we're not going to get into here. Mm -hmm. Topically, a lot of the resveratrol data is in that in vitro cell culture phase. And mm -hmm. the main thing that they're looking at is actually resveratrol is an ingredient that can target tyrosinase and other pathways that's associated with pigment production. Yes. So it's actually most of the data stems from uh, resveratrol as a brightening uh, hyperpigmentation ingredient. Mm -hmm. I'll put kind of the table up here. They've actually been through the gamut of tests. Uh, in terms of in vitro hyperpigmentation data. Mm -hmm. And it shows that it's pretty promising. And they even went down to the animal model side where they tested on, um, on rodent models to reduce UV-induced skin pigmentation with 1% resveratrol topically. So that's kind of the early forays of what resveratrol can potentially do for your skin topically. There's also a couple of smaller studies with 22 subjects, 21 subjects, um, uh, using about 0.4% resveratrol to look mm -hmm. at, again, hyperpigmentation with some level of success. And that's kind of it in terms of resver what resveratrol is, what it can do for you topically. But of course, the number one question we get is, okay, that's cool and all, but how does it compare to vitamin C? Yeah, I have a couple thoughts here. I think the first one, I really like um, this diagram that Gloria found that kind of shows like the mechanism of resveratrol. But I don't know if Gloria feel this way is like after they do kind of their in vitro screen and cell culture, I feel like a lot of these ingredients just get tied to like a bunch of mechanisms. Like I almost find this diagram kind of funny where it's like resveratrol helps here and here and here and here in the pathway. And like <laughs> you're just like that's yeah, I, I, I mean, sure, maybe it's flagged for that. But like, can we actually say that's a true mechanism? Does it really um, play its part in four different ways? Like I I always feel slightly skeptical of that. But anyways, I, that's just one of the things I always, every time we do mechanism research, I feel this way. I'm like, I'm not really sure. You know, the funny thing, that it's funny you said that because I looked at that chart and I kept scrolling really fast. <laughs> I was, it's like, it's almost like when you see more than four arrows, it's yeah. like, they don't know. They, they don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're just, this is just a guess here. It's like pin the tail on the donkey kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, and I think the other thing I did want to mention is um, people might be wondering why we started talking about uh, resveratrol as a hyperpigmentation ingredient, even though we introduced it as an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that this actually happens a lot in skincare in terms of tying antioxidants to actual skin benefits because they it's kind of almost like an adjacent skin benefit would be that it can help with hyperpigmentation because as an antioxidant it's reducing the free radicals that are causing hyperpigmentation so mm -hmm. hopefully that links everything together for you guys in terms of why it's almost like this jump that's happening in terms of testing and what it's actually being tied to 